objectivity part to what extent we can make the assessment as objectivity let me start with uh, uh, one contention that the, when when you talk about the assessment now uh, whatever it may be whether it is assessment as learning of learning or for learning uh, for me uh, it it necessarily need to have three important things uh, first one is we we would like we need to collect information the collection of information is the first component of any any type of assessment then the second one is ascertaining the status and third one is the identifying the gaps and these three components necessarily needs to be there in any type of assessment of course there is a pre assessment activity as well as post assessment things pre assessment nothing but we nowadays uh, when we are talking about the assessment it is not an independent entity we are thinking that assessment is a part and parcel of our teaching learning process that's what uh, the continuous assessment talking about that means pre assessment part is we have a teaching learning situation process we have lots of other activities when these activities are organized these are the pre part of the assessment we are collecting lots of information ascertaining the status and identifying the gap so that we can understand where we need to as a teacher recruit to support the student even the students as sir mentioned about the assessments as learning the student themselves will get an idea about where he or she is lacking so that these are all the mode of identifying the weakness as well as the strength so that the proper support mechanism can be ensured i would like to start with that particular definition when we are talking about the uh, collection of information the topic asset uh, assigned to me is to what extent this objectivity can ensure when i'm talking about the objectivity in an assessment there are two three important parts the it is nothing but we have to you know uh, take an uh, accurate judgment about what the child knows understands and what he or she can do these are the three aspects when we are talking about an objectivity ensuring objectivity in an assessment whether during this type of collection of information are we able to accurately judge the performance of the child in terms of all these things you can right away connected with competency when the ramanandran sir mentioned about the competency is uh, is is actually a ks knowledge attitude and skill and it is a combination of knowledge attitude and skill and this is what the objectivity in assessment also we need to ascertain and when i'm saying that uh, to make an assess assessment objective as far as possible and at the same time assessment require collection of different types of information we need to collect information which need to help us to identify what a child knows what a child understood what a child can do and if i am simply using a paper pencil test if i am simply using an assignment is it possible to objectively assess these aspect of a child's improvement sir was talking about the growth mindset you, i i just would like to see to what extent the child has grown i may not be able to ascertain that extent if i am going to use a particular test every time that is what the objectivity in assessment tells when i am going to collect lots of information we of course need to Uh, rely on different types of tools we definitely need to rely on different sources of information a single source of information will not be possible to provide us an objective result and that's what this continuous comprehensive assessment when cbs is in co mentioned about cbsc i just would like to give two uh, example one from the cbsc and one from a stage it uh, one is from uh, my own research study what i when the cbsc in, uh, introduced the continuous comprehensive assessment across the country 
uh, earlier uh, to, uh, during 2011 12 uh, they introduced the concept of formative assessment and summative assessment fa and sa and the board examination as well as the all the secondary from secondary onwards all the examination need to have two fa it was a semester type examination two f uh, four fa two sa this was the uh, order given by the CBSC during those times. There should be four formative assessment in a year. There should be two summative assessment in a year, in each semester one. And I, I got an uh, exposure to conduct a research study during that time. Uh, the study research shows that in one of the CBSC, it is a centrally sponsored CBSC school. What I found is, uh, each before each formative assessment, they conducted four unit tests. For before each formative assessment, they conducted four unit tests. That means for FA, they conducted 16 unit tests. For a particular subject, altogether in a year, they conducted 16 unit tests for FA to SA. That is total 22 paper pencil tests. There were five subjects for class nine, class eight, and all. Five into 22, which is 110. And if you take average working days, 220, every two days, there will be one test. This was the situation during those times. And the CCE introduced it with a beautiful goal of ascertaining the uh, progress of the child minutely and supporting the child for improving their performance in different areas. But that has been misunderstood in different ways. And loads of tests were conducted and the anxiety were increased among the child, stress were increased among the child because of that. This is one part of the objective when we are talking about the objective, whether they are testing what actually supposed to test. It will, of course, will affect the reliability and the validity of the uh, activities. And second example, it is from a state syllabus. They have introduced, they introduced a CCE of 20 marks for each subject. And in this 20 marks will be given for a minimum four activities. Each activity, they will be giving five marks. Uh, there is a score sheet. This is an experience, observational experience I found. One of the teacher is, giving the marks 20 to a particular child in the sheet, what the teacher did is the last column was the total, 20. She fixed the 20 first, that column completed, then assignment four, project three. She, I am using she because I, I saw a particular lady, a female teacher doing this activity. They, she, uh, the teacher, bifurcated that 20 to uh, out of five, three to assignment, four to project, three to unit test like that. Think about the objectivity. Think about the performance of the child in the progressive way. Are we looking to see what happened in the growth mind mindset of the child over an year or not? This is another example. And uh, since the talking, talking, uh, topic as, uh, given to me was talking about this part also, are we doing this? Of course, I will say in most of the cases, it's no. We are not making, we have a beautiful theory. We have a beautiful objective in with us processes also, but when it implemented in our country, it has gone in different ways. It was interpreted by different people in different way. Because of that, this happened. And what we can do, as Sir mentioned, uh, uh, this competency and different types of uh, 21st century skills and the need for you know, assessing the student's performance over a year based on this aspect and all. Uh, the, uh, the objectivity when I'm talking to ensure all for all these type of assessment, we need to ensure objectivity in three important aspects. The first one is for tools. What tools we are going to, tools or techniques we are going to use for assessment. 
uh, as i mentioned earlier the single tool alone will not give us an accurate result if you want to see how the students are performing even a unit test conducted by teacher alone will not give us the results why can we have a discussion with the students the friends of that particular students who are being with the student for more than year or maybe two year three year continuously together with the students their reflection will have a greater value when we are assessing a particular student i am a student i naturally believe that i want to improve my performance every time i want to connect what i learned with what is happening outside the world of course my reflection will have a value i need to consider my own reflection also when i am going to assess why can't we have tools or techniques which will provide us information from different sources that is why this continuous comprehensive assessment earlier they suggested or uh, as sir mentioned 360 degree assessment we need to use make use of different techniques uh, which will help to uh, conduct assessment as learning of course when i'm talking about as as learning there are two important uh, techniques all over world now uh, many of the western countries they are successfully utilizing those tools self assessment as well as peer assessment this we need to integrate in our classroom practices we need to utilize dust as a very important techniques for assessments and along with that assessment uh, for learning there are lots of assessment for learning techniques also simple observation are we you know when i am uh, you know when as a teacher when i am organizing a group work uh, i i can go and visit the groups and how they are doing what ha is happening in the group i can even if they are doing something wrong i can provide them immediate feedback i can provide support to them there are many ways to support to them therefore observation as a technique is a very important uh, method for per, uh, assessment for learning like that we have we can have lots of things uh, we are up, uh, we are conducting seminar we are conducting project and all for the sake of conducting project but what is the meaning of project and why we need to conduct the project that is more important and how to conduct and how to assess it in a better way these are some of the things i feel need to be ensured among our among the practitioners for getting the desired result that is first aspect of the objectivity second one is process how we are implementing it in our classroom and how we are collecting the information to what extent we can ensure the re uh, reliability and validity of those informations that is another aspect and then the interpretation these three we can make very effectively uh, among our teachers among our practitioners but one important thing is in in our country what happens the, i i think i have left with only one minute the last one i would like to say is uh, one of the important things which are lacking in our country is whenever this assessment reforms or whatever may be the reforms happening we are not even giving a proper orientation to our teaching community the second one we are not updating our syllabus or curriculum or support materials for teacher education programs that uh, the relations also we need to ensure whenever it's happening it need to start with the pre service as well as in service program that is more important when it comes to the implementation see many of the uh, policy impl um, uh, aspects implementation fail or it is not reached up to the grassroots level because of this uh, lack of orientation of lack of awareness among the people who are responsible for implementing at okay. the classroom level yeah.